um, I actually, I, I reread it a couple of times. It was on my computer and I just kept rereading it. Families here in the West desperate for answers tonight after learning a deadly drone attack in Jordan injured several Arizona National Guardsmen. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to West Coast Wrap. I'm Alex Savage. That strike on a military outpost killed three U.S. troops and left dozens more injured, including Arizona service members. It happened yesterday at the installation in Jordan known as Tower 22. The base along the Syrian border is used mainly by U.S. troops assisting Jordanian forces. Dozens of National Guard troops from Arizona were deployed to this region last year. Fox 10 Steve Nielsen spoke with people in Arizona who are anxiously waiting to learn more about the service members who were injured. Well, we asked the Arizona National Guard for any more information they could provide on these guardsmen. They said at this point right now, they are focusing on the families and notifying all involved. Mindy volunteers at the National Guard and works with the families of those deployed. All the families, we're all in the same situation. We don't know if that's our soldier until we get notified and we just got to hope for the best and hope that we don't get that phone call or that knock on the door. Margie knows what that knock on the door is like. You know it and it's like, oh God, you're just... After her son, Sergeant Michael Adam Marzano, died in Iraq, she started the military assistance mission to help Arizona military and their families. Fox 10 was there as Arizona Guardsmen were deployed for Operation Spartan Shield last year. Margie said she was devastated when she heard the news of Arizona Guardsmen injured in that deadly attack. I choked. I did. Um, I actually, I, I reread it a couple of times. It was on my computer and I just kept rereading it and rereading it. With tensions rising overseas, anxiety for families at home is also on the rise. You know, if you're used to getting that video call from a loved one or a phone call from a loved one and you're not getting it, you've got to be wondering. You just hope for the best and hope and pray that that's not them. You just get that call at the end of the day like normal, but the 12 hour difference or whatever hour difference, and they call you and say, hey, I love you, I'm here. And that's all you can wait for. And at this point, it is still unclear how many guardsmen were injured or their names. Steve Nielsen, Fox 10 News. Arizona Governor Katie Hobbs posted on social media that she is heartbroken to learn Arizona National Guardsmen were wounded in action. She said the state is ready to offer support for the guardsmen and their families. A U.S. official tells Fox News the enemy drone got past their air defenses because it was mistaken for a U.S. drone that was expected to return to that base around the same time. The drone hit a barracks where service members were sleeping at the time. Officials say President Biden is weighing options for a response. We do not seek another war. We do not seek to escalate. But we will absolutely do what is required to protect ourselves to continue that mission and to respond appropriately to these attacks. The Defense Department released photos of the three U.S. Army soldiers who were killed. 23-year-old Specialist Brianna Moffitt of Savannah, Georgia, 46-year-old Sergeant William Rivers of Carrollton, Georgia, and 24-year-old Specialist Kennedy Sanders from Waycross, Georgia. Authorities in Sacramento are investigating a fire this afternoon near a sick temple that led to several large propane tanks exploding. Flames burned through a building in front of the Gurdwara Sacramento Sick Society, but the temple itself was spared from damage. A witness told KCRA 3 News a car fire spread to those propane tanks. Authorities say no one was hurt in that fire. Authorities in San Bernardino County have made arrests in the case of six people all found dead in a remote part of California's Mojave Desert. Five people have now been arrested nearly a week after the bodies were discovered in the small desert community of El Mirage, about 50 miles northeast of Los Angeles. All six victims had been shot and four of the bodies were also burned at the scene. A sheriff's office says the killings appear to be related to a dispute over marijuana. We've un re unleashed a plague in this California, and the plague is the black market of marijuana and certainly cartel activity and a number of victims that are out there. The sheriff's office says the area where the victims were killed is known for illicit marijuana. The victims ranged in age from 24 to 34 years old. Vice President Kamala Harris was in the Bay Area today to talk about abortion rights. She spoke at the Mexican Heritage Plaza in San Jose. 
The vice president praised her home state for its protections on reproductive freedom and applauded voters for approving a proposition to add abortion and contraception access in the California Constitution. The Biden-Harris campaign is making abortion rights a central focus of their re-election strategy. One does not have to abandon their faith or deeply held beliefs to agree the government should not be telling her what to do with her body. I think they're thinking that if they can use this issue plus, for example, climate change, that might re-inspire young people. Vice President Harris's arrival did spark some protests today. She was repeatedly interrupted by demonstrators calling for a ceasefire in Gaza and an end to the Israel-Hamas war. The U.S. Senate continues to work on a bipartisan border agreement, which could be ready in just a matter of days. A compromise deal has been reached, and Senate leaders right now are finishing the text on it. The agreement includes a new authority that allows President Biden to shut down the border when unlawful crossings reach high levels. Certain migrants would be allowed to stay here in the U.S. if they can prove they're fleeing torture or persecution in their home countries. The bill would still include aid for Ukraine, Israel and Taiwan, but the Biden administration still has to win over House Speaker Mike Johnson. He should give this administration the authority and funding we're requesting to secure the border. This bill focuses on getting us to zero illegal crossings a day. There's no amnesty. It increases the number of Border Patrol agents, it increases asylum officers. Some Republicans and presidential candidate Donald Trump, the former president, opposed the bill. Oklahoma Senator James Lankford says there is a lot of misinformation about its content, and he says he is looking forward to Trump and others having the opportunity to read it once there is, in fact, text. Seattle's Office of Police Accountability believes it is appropriate for the police department to fire an officer who was caught on video making insensitive remarks about a crash victim. But she is dead. <laughs> yeah, just write a check. Just yeah, what? Eleven thousand dollars. She was twenty-six anyway. She had limited value. A body-worn camera uh, captured Daniel Otterer, and it heard what he said last year after a fellow officer struck and killed Janavi Kandula with a patrol car as she was crossing the street. Last week, a months-long investigation concluded that Otterer's remarks violated department policy. Now the Office of Police Accountability is recommending a punishment ranging from 270 hours of suspension without pay to termination. The Seattle Police Department will have the final say on Otterer's future with the force. It is unclear exactly when a decision will be made. Los Angeles police say four people were shot during a sideshow last night. It happened in South L.A. The four shooting victims were taken to hospitals, and at this point, authorities have not released their conditions. So far, police have not announced any arrests in connection with that shooting. It was one of several side shows that took place across the L.A. area over this past weekend. A Facebook group is being credited tonight with helping to recover stolen cars. It joined forces with a law enforcement operation that spanned two West Coast states. As Fox 12's Jeffrey Lindblom reports, more than a dozen cars were recovered and 13 arrests were made. And first one recovered of the day. Some people have hobbies like watching sports or gardening or rock climbing, and my hobby is finding stolen cars. Titan Crawford says his Facebook group has helped recover thousands of stolen vehicles. It's been a big help because the police can't be everywhere. The group has been assisting Portland police on vehicle recovery missions since last July, playing a part in their most recent one, too. We notify them of the location and they get over there and recover the vehicle uh, extremely fast. Crawford says they work directly with officers on shift. Take all of our text messages and phone calls that we've spotted a stolen car. We met with Crawford while he was tracking a stolen Mazda, under the impression the person who stole it was nearby, as the hood of the vehicle was still hot to the touch, like it had just been running, like this individual, who we saw approach the car, trying to get inside. Uh, what we just witnessed was a gentleman walk up to the car and pretend like he didn't see the public safety officer who was blocking the vehicle in, at which point, when the public safety officer notified him it was stolen, he ran away. A few minutes after that gentleman fled, a tow truck arrived and Crawford says this vehicle is officially on its way to eventually be back in the hands of its rightful owner. We assist in helping locate stolen vehicles and um, bring them home. 
brought home to people like Scott Gillis, a combat veteran who owns this Mazda and says it was stolen early in the morning, this being the second time he's dealt with a stolen vehicle in the last six months. Just going to have to be a little bit more vigilant, honestly. He's thankful to see it all in one piece, finding all of his documents inside, alongside a bullet he says doesn't belong to him, which was just a small piece compared to the bag of bullets found in the center console. Gillis and his partner, who wound up finding a bit more than just their stolen car, would like to remind people to remain vigilant. You know, just when you think something can't happen to you, it could. And that was Fox 12's Jeffrey Lindblom reporting for us tonight. The weekend roundup recovered 11 stolen vehicles in Portland. Four more were then found in the Vancouver, Washington area. Coming up tonight here on West Coast Wrap, the San Francisco 49ers are Super Bowl bound, set to face off against the Kansas City Chiefs in Las Vegas in less than two weeks. We'll show you how fans are already gearing up for the big game. And we'll see what's being done today to help clear the way for the Oakland A's to make Las Vegas home. And record warmth today on parts of the West Coast. When I come back, we'll take a look at those records, some of them, and then we'll take a look at the rain that is going to pretty much get all of us wet. I'll be back here with that coming up. The 49ers faithful are still flying high tonight after that thrilling comeback win last night that earned the Niners a trip to the Super Bowl. Fans showed up early this morning at Levi Stadium in Santa Clara looking to get their gear for the big game. Last night, the Niners overcame a 17 point halftime deficit to beat the Detroit Lions in the NFC Championship game. At a Dick's Sporting Goods store in Daly City, south of San Francisco, Super Bowl 58 merchandise was selling fast. So we're gearing up for the Super Bowl, so we had to get, you know, the championship hat. Spent about a thousand the other day on NFC Championship shirts, and now today, once they won, some champion, I guess, going to the Super Bowl t-shirts. And a whole lot of people spending a whole lot of money. Experts say this outflow of cash should help an industry that is still recovering from the pandemic. <laughs> Less than two weeks from now, the Niners will take on the Kansas City Chiefs in Super Bowl 58 in Las Vegas. And football fans are clearly already making their plans to be in town for the game. Some of the hotels that are right near Allegiant Stadium in Vegas are already sold out for that weekend of February 9th through the 12th. And if you can find a room, well, expect to pay. The Stay Bridge Suites right near the stadium currently has vacancies listed at more than $1,200 per night for Super Bowl weekend. Some rooms are available along the strip at some of those hotels, including at Aria for $1,300 per night and at Fountain Blue for more than $1,400 per night. Get ready to spend some big bucks. Well, getting Allegiant Stadium all ready for the big game is no small task. Fox 5's Victoria Saha shows us how first responders in Las Vegas are reworking their routines to ensure they can quickly respond to emergencies near that venue. This is the biggest event to come to Las Vegas, and with that means the biggest crowd we might ever see here. Of course, with that many people gathered all at once at the stadium, it could mean medical emergencies on or off the field. You see them stationed throughout the valley, ready to respond to anything. Anybody that's, you know, having really any kind of heart-related issues ultimately gets a monitor put on them. What you might not know is that they're also on the grounds at Allegiant Stadium during game days. So it's a given that they'll be on the field Super Bowl Sunday with hundreds of their teams tending to the players and the fans. A typical game day um, for any other type of game day that we have there at the stadium, but amplified or on steroids, uh, so to speak. Senior Director Glenn Simpson says the security measures at the stadium will be tight, which means it won't be easy for their ambulances to go in and out. Here where we're deploying, you know, all of our equipment, so everything from our medication bags that get added to our ambulances, to our cardiac monitors, uh, down to our jump bags. Um, so, you know, on Super Bowl Sunday, the majority of these shelves will be empty and deployed um, to ensure that we have enough resources on the road. We'll have an increased presence in and around the stadium itself. Um, we'll also have an increased presence outside the perimeter. Simpson says more than likely if someone needs to be transported, they will need to get on a gurney. 
and be taken outside the stadium. But they're working with the NFL to make sure first aid stations are placed throughout the stadium just in case. We're confident that we're prepared to respond that should something of significant nature happen um, from something as simple as somebody needing a Band-Aid um, to something more catastrophic if, if that should occur. Simpson says they started planning for the Super Bowl last year and even until today their plan isn't even fully concrete up until game day. Reporting from Allegiant Stadium, Victoria Saha, Fox 5 News, local Las Vegas. And we're learning more tonight about plans to relocate the Oakland A's to Las Vegas. Today, Bally's Corporation announced it will close the doors at the Tropicana Casino property on the Strip on April 2nd. Bally's president, George Papanier, says that is being done to move forward with plans to transform the site into a state-of-the-art integrated resort and ballpark. It appears a potential timeline to overhaul that property has been cut significantly. In May of last year, Bally's president suggested the Tropicana could remain open until May of 2025. Bally's president says the plans for the new ballpark are still being finalized, but he did not indicate when those plans would be ready to reveal to the public. People in parts of northwest Washington are worried a new round of storms will lead to even more flooding later this week. A combination of rain and snow melt created minor flooding in Stanwood along the Stillaguamish River over the weekend. A flood warning already is in effect about 30 miles east of Stanwood because of the threat of those new storms. Let's bring in KTVU's chief meteorologist Bill Martin, who is tracking these next storm systems that will be sweeping all across the west. And, and Bill, these storms will affect more than just Washington. Yeah, it's pretty much the entire West Coast from all the way up from Canada south to Ensenada. We've got rain coming, especially on Wednesday for most of the West Coast and then on Thursday into L.A. where they'll see more rain. We'll start off with the record warmth today. It was really warm. We had a record in Reno. We had a record in Sacramento. We had San Francisco broke a record at 73 degrees. Temperatures well above the average in this pattern. I want to show you the atmospheric river that we're tracking. You can see that little blue area, right? So there's where it is now. Here's where it goes. It focuses mainly in the north. That's the Pacific Northwest, hence the flood watch. And then it shifts south on Wednesday. See it kind of that, that cool. bright blue area. And then it works its way and moves through on Wednesday through San Francisco area and then down into Southern California on Thursday. And then again, Southern California gets whacked with something on Saturday and Sunday. So we'll keep an eye on that for you. In the meantime, though, we've definitely got a, 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 a rainy period coming up. I think the snow levels are going to be high, which makes sense, right? This is an El Nino, a strong El Nino year. So you've got a uh, warmer temperature, a warmer air, obviously, and hence the record temperatures today. But this moisture coming in is coming from Hawaii, essentially. We used to, back in the day, we call that the Pineapple Express. Now it's an atmospheric river. It's all the same thing. This is what's happening in the Pacific Northwest. Now you can see the heavy showers showing up in Vancouver, south towards uh, Portland. Uh, Seattle as well, and then showers showing up in Northern California. Tomorrow's going to be a day in Northern California and Central California of increasing clouds. And then on Wednesday, it starts to rain. We'll show you that. I'll have the model coming up here in a few minutes, but this is right now. And again, the rainfall accumulations, especially in the coastal hills, let's say San Francisco, Marin County, south of Santa Cruz, Big Sur, those hills could easily see two to three to four inches of rain over just 24 to 36 hours. So it's classic El Nino because it's warm air, hits the coastal hills, hits the west slope of the Sierra Nevada and goes off. Snow levels are going to be high. You see here Southern California in the sun and they will be for the next day and a half, two days. But then on Wednesday night into Thursday, Southern California gets hit pretty hard. So right now, uh, San Francisco was today had low 70s. Check out Seattle, just 58 degrees for the high temperature. And it's going to be continued wet up there tomorrow and big time as we go through the rest of the next 36 hours. So when I come back, I'll put the forecast together for you and I'll give you a, a specific forecast for your region. All right, Bill, thank you. Coming up tonight here on West Coast Wrap, uh, or actually, first, we're going to tell you about the U.S. Embassy in the Bahamas warning travelers to be cautious because of an increase in homicides there. The State Department issued that warning after 18 murders were reported this year. The killings have happened at all hours of the day, including in broad daylight on the streets. Officials say gang violence is the primary motive there. And up next for us on West Coast Wrap tonight, a one-stop shop for San Diego flood victims. Coming up, we'll show you where they're going to get help.
Also, it's a moment some skiers will never forget. See how they welcomed a surprise visitor on the slopes in Colorado. NASA's James Webb Telescope has captured some stunning new detailed images of 19 spiral galaxies near the Milky Way. Those galaxies range from 15 million to 60 million light years from Earth. The observations are offering some new clues into star formations as well as galactic structure and evolution. Well, SpaceX sent up 22 satellites from California last night. Three, two, one, ignition. And liftoff of Falcon 9. This rocket was launched from Vandenberg Space Force Base. SpaceX says the rocket carried the satellites into orbit for the Starlink Internet system. People whose homes were damaged by last week's devastating flash flooding in San Diego are looking for help recovering. Fox 5's Christelle Kumwe takes us to the One Stop Shop Assistance Center that is seeing some large crowds. The County of San Diego opened a help center at the Spring Valley Library on Kempton Street Sunday morning. The center provided a one-stop shop for flood victims like Mike Castro. There was uh, like eight inches of water inside the house, so I'm in the process of repairing the house as I speak. Looking for help and information as they continue to recover. I haven't got an estimate, no, because I was planning on doing the work myself. The torrential downpours caused millions of dollars of damage to homes, businesses, and more. County officials estimate $70 million worth of infrastructure damage. I've seen all sorts of uh, horrific damage across the county, you know, different disasters. And this is probably one of the largest turnouts at our local assistance centers I've ever seen. County Assessor Jordan Marks says over 400 people stopped by the help center. And each of them were like, I'm not sure, I'm thinking about this, I got a lot on my mind. We're going to help be there with you, we're your partner in rebuilding. Different organizations, nonprofits, and government agencies were on site. You need birth certificates, marriage certificates for FEMA applications. We're doing it all here. To provide services from clothing and food, to property tax relief. So far, this is the best thing that I've seen here. Castro found out through the process that his rental property was considered a loss and eligible for a break this tax season. It is some type of relief, you know, hey, at least, uh, you know, I get some kind of a tax break, you know, which is a good thing. Anybody, everybody likes tax breaks, is right? In Spring Valley, I'm Christelle Kumwe. Finally tonight, it was a surprising sight for some skiers in Colorado as a moose hit the slopes right alongside them. This happened over the weekend at Steamboat Ski Resort near Denver. The moose ambled around, giving skiers time to snap their photos. Those who saw the moose said she had a baby and it was nearby and she seemed to be protecting the little one. Steamboat Resort says visits from moose and other wildlife are quite common, but still. Quite the scene there for those skiers and snowboarders in Colorado. That does it for West Coast Wrap tonight. We appreciate you watching. And a reminder, you can stream our shows online with the Fox Local app. Have a great rest of your night. I'll see you back here tomorrow.